Hello, Cross Point. Wherever you are right now, would you rise to your feet and worship our King together?
Thank you. 
time in God's word and Pastor John's going to bring a message but before that let us pray together. Dear Jesus thank you for moments like this where we can come together united under one name to praise you to worship you as families as friends as a church family. So God we thank you for that and as we enter into a time in your word we pray that you will speak to us that your Holy Spirit will rest on us in every home to where this is streaming. God, we pray that your Holy Spirit would just affect us, that you would move us and that you would teach us and that you would stir our affections toward you, Father. And as we enter into a time of communion, God, I pray that it won't be weird that we're not all together in one place with the little juice boxes and the crackers, but God, in our own homes, we can celebrate communion with you and communion together as believers, remembering your sacrifice on the cross, your body and your blood poured out for us to save us, to cover our sin and iniquity. Lord, we just thank you for that. And before we even enter into this time, I pray that you would just do a work in our heart, that you would cleanse us, that you would develop in us a discipleship that we didn't have before this morning. And God, we love you. We thank you. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, good morning and happy Mother's Day to all the wonderful, wonderful mothers out there. And if you were all here at Cross Point Church, what we would do is we would ask all the mothers to uh, please stand. So wherever you are right now as you're watching me, if you're a mother, would you please stand and we would just love to give you a round of applause. God bless you. Thank God for mothers. And another thing that we would do if you were here is we would ask who's the oldest mother in the room. And we don't have a way of knowing who's the oldest mother joining with us today. If you want to send in a comment and say, hey, I'm whatever age. But anyway, happy, happy Mother's Day. We thank God for our mothers. I also want to remind all of you that on Wednesday nights to join us 
as our pastors are going through the book of Philippians and uh, what a blessing they are and I thank God for all of our pastors always remember this that at Cross Point Church Jesus is over everything always remember that the Bible is central to everything that we do remember that prayer fuels the furnace remember that and remember that people are the mission and of course because of all this lives are transformed and again I want to thank God for our wonderful musicians uh, that prepare and, and bring us before the Lord and I want to thank God for all of our technicians and the guys that work back in the back and the sound booth uh, just just thank you so much for camera guys all the rest to make all of this possible so today uh, we're still in our series a life that matters Colossians chap just chapter 2 verse 8 through 10 now we're gonna name we're gonna use some um, some verses a little further into it but today we're just gonna start with this uh, these couple of verses here Colossians 2 8 through 10 see to it that no one takes you captive through hollow and deceptive philosophy which depends on human tradition and the basic principles of this world rather than on Christ for in Christ all the fullness of the deity lives in bodily form and you have been given fullness in Christ who is the head over every power and every authority we thank God for his reading we've been looking at how God has rescued us from the kingdom of darkness he's rescued us from the kingdom of darkness and he's transformed us into the kingdom of the son that he loves actually in effect we've been transformed from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light and let me just park on that for just a little bit can you imagine and it really is so sad that 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 our world doesn't grasp this that we were dead in our trespasses and sins there's a place called hell that we don't want to go it is the kingdom of darkness we don't want anybody to go to that place we want you to be part of the kingdom of light of whom Jesus Christ is the Lord Jesus of course is preeminent in the world nothing in this world happened without him he's the creator of the world I guess I don't know I shouldn't make this statement definitively but I guess if he were to fall asleep for a minute or two maybe the whole world would fall apart I don't know but he is preeminent in everything now Colossae this little place this little young church was facing some philosophers and some intellectual confusion that's what they had you know there's all kind of intellectual confusion this goes on right now uh, it goes on in our universities sometimes in our own seminaries but this little place Colossae was facing some philosophers and intellectual confusion they were philosophies floating around that could threaten that little church that Paul wanted it to do so well they were bad philosophies he says in verse 8 he says there he says now what you need to do is take it, it, the, these philosophies that take you captive captive nobody wants to let some false teachers and false uh, instructors come in and therefore make us and take us captive the greatest thing we can have is freedom in the Lord Jesus Christ but we can get all wrapped up and all confused with all kind of different teachings that are out there Paul said I don't want you to get caught up in that and so let's don't be held hostage Paul says here's what he says look at this he says your freedom in Christ your freedom in Christ is taken away if we listen to false teachings that is so important for us to remember one of the things that we are in Jesus Christ is we're free in Christ we've been freed from the bondage of this world but here what happens is so many times even in churches today people come along and try to add this thing and that thing and the next thing you know there's a lot of confusion now there were three philosophies there were three philosophies that were threatening to kidnap the Colossi church three of them the first one was a thing called mysticism mysticism Colossians 2 18 again let, let's look at that don't let anyone well we haven't looked at that yet we'll get to that as we go on he said but do not let it do not let anyone who delights in false humility and the worship of angels 
disqualify you for the prize. Such a person goes into great detail about what he has seen, and his unspiritual mind puffs him up with idle notions. Now, one thing I don't want to have, and the one thing I don't want you to have, is idle notions. I don't want us to have that. I don't want us to get puffed up with false teaching. And, and neither did Paul. He didn't want that. He didn't want that at all. I don't need any false teachings in my life. You don't need any false teachings. That's what Paul was concerned about. So he talks about this thing. He says it's mysticism. Now remember, we talked about this for a few weeks. Gnosticism is that system of beliefs that felt that no man in and of himself was good enough to reach out and to talk to God. Now, please understand this. Please understand this. I know and you know that none of us ever in our own behavior and our own merit can ever merit salvation. We know that. We've been taught that if we're biblically taught at all. We know that I can never get to God on my own. But the mysticism and what was going on with some of the teaching of those days is you needed extra helpers and all the rest to get you close to God. And so some felt, some felt that there were angels that were all arranged in a hierarchy. Well, we know that there probably are archangels and other angels, but this was a different type of thing. What happened is some felt not only that were the angels arrived, arranged in a hierarchy, they were also intermediaries between us and God. And we needed to use angels to get us close to God. This became a very, very popular teaching around that area. And Paul says, perish that thought. That's not the way we do it. Some felt that angels got better and better, excuse me, got better and better and more powerful as they got closer to God themselves. Some had names like wisdom and power and reason. Those were the names given to some of them. Some, some of them had thought that you had to placate these angels in order to get close to God. Where is that in the scripture? But some people were teaching this. And as we work through these angels, we find oneness with all. Oneness with all. Now, folks, listen. There are some fantastic books and there's some fantastic teaching on angels. But you need to make sure that you understand that angels and talking about angels, they are the servants of the most holy God. And it's not about them. It's not about them at all. It's about God and him alone. Angels do the wonderful work of the Lord, and we thank God for them. But what had happened, uh, you know, there was Michael and Gabriel, and they're coming up with a bunch of other names of different angels. And somehow, uh, your communion with these angels got you closer to God. That is not biblical teaching. Now, does this kind of sound familiar with some of the teachings that we hear in our world today. I know it's not as new age as it was, but new age thinking, new age movement, those things like that. Let me just say something. There's nothing new about the new age. It's been around for thousands and thousands of years. And it allows us to think that there's some other thing to get connected with in a higher power or whatever it might be. In this one book, uh, there's many books out there. and I've been told that out of this book, Ask Your Angel, I don't have it. Some people have told me that this is in there. It says, li listen to this writing. It says, my connection to Andrew is ancient. We were created together out of space and in a time out of time. Well, I tell you, I'm already confused whatever that's supposed to mean. It says, since we entered the realms of space and time, we've always traveled together. I've worked with him, meaning an angel, and out at him in and out of lives as a midwife and a mother and a healer and a painter and a dancer and a flute player and an architect and a hunter. And it says this, the two of us were working to bridge the physical world where humans exist to be conduits of spiritual energy into the material world. What? What? I don't need angels for all of that. I haven't been traveling through time, through centuries with my angel. I haven't been doing that. 
I was conceived in my mother's womb a few years back, and I was born. And one day I'll take my last breath. I didn't exist 300 years ago. I didn't hang out with a bunch of angels, and they're not my way of getting to God. You know what they do? They, they, all they do is paint the glory of God and look to the glory of God. I need to remember that. You know what it does, though? This, see this, this, this mysticism? It sounds humble because it's like I'm saying, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not good enough. You're, we get that. We're not good enough. I must use these angels. It kind of sounds humble. But then you hear words like, you know, move your God in, move you out, get connected with the Spirit, move out of yourself. What? What? That's not where we need. See, see, actually, this teaching, especially the teachings about the mysticism with angels, which was part of the Gnosticism of the day, and many other things with it. Actually, this teaching is the ultimate in pride. Because what it's saying is that God in his revealed word does not tell the truth. Did you hear what I just said? Actually, this teaching is the ultimate in pride because it's saying that God in his revealed word does not tell the truth. And isn't that exactly the tool of the devil? I mean, isn't that the way it's always been? Genesis 3, 1. That's exactly what happened. The devil comes along and says, has God really said? So once again, it takes, rather than the teaching of Scripture, and brings in another angle. The truth is, listen, listen, the truth is, always understand this, Jesus is the only mediator between us and the Father. Did you hear what I just said? It's not an angel that helps me get to the Father. It's not a saint that I pray to. It is Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And you know one of the reasons why, and, and sometimes it becomes uh, rote, sometimes it becomes almost prite, trite, but you know, when we say in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, well, why do we say in Jesus' name? Because when we pray in Jesus' name, we have access to the Father, and we thank God for that. We praise God for that. Thank you, Lord, for, for that. Number next, number two, the second philosophy that threatened the church of the day was something called asceticism. Look what it says here later on in chapter 2 of Colossians. It says, since you died with Christ to the basic principles of this world, why as though you still belong to it, do you submit to its rules? Do not handle, do not taste, do not touch. These are all destined to perish with use. Because they're based on human commands and teachings. Such regulations, look what it says here, uh, Colossians 2, 20-23. Such regulations in, indeed have an appearance of wisdom and their self-imposed worship, their false humility, and their harsh treatment of the body, but they lack any value in restraining sensual indulgence. What I'm saying here is what he was talking about once again. The Gnostics of the world, the thinking of the, of the day that came against the truth of Scripture, what it was saying is don't touch, don't handle, don't taste, don't do anything that has anything to do with this world. And it, it, it's, it's, it's silly is what it is. Basically what it was saying, what we needed to do, what it was saying is that to get on the good side of God you needed to be an ascetic, asceticism person. To get on the good God of God required extreme self-denial. In other words, the only way God would accept me is I had to whip myself with whips. Can you imagine? People literally beat themselves with whips. Starve yourself. Don't use a blanket when it's cold. When you're trying to sleep and you don't put on a blanket because you you're, have asceticism. That's what you're trying to do. We're going to impress God. Those things don't impress God. That's not how I get to the Father. I come through Christ and Him alone. It's not like I'm going to earn spiritual points because I do something like this. The Bible tells me I'm supposed to love God 
with all my heart, soul, mind, and strength. And I'm supposed to love my neighbor as myself. Well, the only reason I can love my neighbor as myself is I've got to love myself. I've got to realize that Jesus Christ, no righteousness of mine, but Jesus Christ loved me so much and loved you so much, you got some worth. You got some great, great, incredible worth. God died for you, and God died for me. We praise God for those things. We understand that. They thought to themselves, they get God's favor. You know, there's people even today, there's people in parts of the world that are around Easter, around Good Friday. There are some places that people literally have themselves nailed to a cross. And somehow that's supposed to impress God? No, that's not. <laughs> Let me just say this. Nothing is gained by asceticism. Now, self-discipline and those types of things, fasting and seeking the Lord and doing those types of things, that's a good thing. That's biblical. But this asceticism, ascetic thought, that this is what it takes to get close to God. Number three, a third, a third treat to, it's not treat, a third threat to Colossians was this thing called legalism. Legalism, something they dealt with. Colossians 2.16, Therefore do not let anyone judge you by what you eat or drink or with regard to a religious festival, a new moon celebration, or a Sabbath day. Back in the day, of course, they on their calendar, the new moon was every 28 days. had a lot to do with the calendar. Basic, basically, Paul is saying that man's longing for truth, understand this, he's saying, basically, Paul is saying that man's longing for truth is found only in Jesus Christ. It's not angels. It's not found in abusing yourself. It's not found in following a big list of rules. It's found in only Jesus Christ. Praise God. I'm so glad we don't have to go through all of that. Verse 8, remember, tells us he calls all of this hollow and deceptive philosophy. Colossians 2, 8 and 10. Let's look at it again. We looked at it at the beginning. See to it that no one takes you captive through hollow and deceptive philosophy, which depends on human tradition and the basic principles of this world, rather than on Christ. For in Christ, all the fullness of the deity lives in bodily, bodily form. In Christ. And you have been given fullness in Christ, who is the head over every power and every authority. You and I. As a matter of fact, the, Bible's tell, the Bible tells us that one of these days we will judge the angels. I, I can't even imagine, but, I, but that's what the Bible says. Because you and I are, have the fullness in Christ. I like what he said about hollow and deceptive, hollow and deceptive doctrines that are out there. It, it, it's kind of like, you know those chocolate bunnies that you get at Easter? You know those chocolate bunnies that you get at Easter? And I'm telling you, what looks better than a chocolate bunny at Easter? But the next thing you know is, is when you're eating the chocolate bunny, you, you go, well, I'm going to eat that ear. And you into that chocolate. And guess what? Outside of the chocolate shell, it's all air inside. Now, don't get me wrong. I appreciate the chocolate shell, but I was looking for something far more substantial than that and so a lot of times these doctrines and these teachings they're kind of like chocolate easter bunnies when you bite into it you feel it's a lot of air i hope that made sense to you <laughs> that's pretty bad illustration i'm afraid but i hope that made sense to you number verse nine again talks about the fullness of the deity uh there was a word that was in greek pleroma the, it was that that was what they were looking for. They were looking the, for the fullness of Jesus Christ. Folks, we don't need mysticism. We don't need asceticism. We don't need angels. We don't need any of those things. We need Christ. Jesus was only the beginning in getting us to the Father. But God says this. Hey, listen to this. Listen to this. Here's what God says. God says this. He said, Jesus Christ, God says this. Jesus Christ is not a stepping stone to fulfill to fullness he's not a stepping stone to fullness 
you don't start with Jesus and then tune into this teaching and that teaching and a bunch of angel worship, that type of thing. No, 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 no. Not, not only does it say Jesus Christ is not a stepping stone to fullness, he also says Jesus Christ is our fullness and completeness. I'm complete in Jesus Christ. And you know what? You know what? You know what? So are you. You're complete in Jesus Christ. Another thing, hey, listen, what's, this is what God says. This is what God says. Jesus contains all of God. When you have Jesus, you have God. Remember, Jesus is part of the Trinity. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. One and three, three and one. We'll never really grasp that. I, I, hopefully in heaven we'll really grasp it. I don't know that we can really grasp it here on this earth. One and three, three and one. I don't know. But I tell you what, this is what the Word of God says. So when I have Jesus, when I have Jesus, I have all the fullness of God. Because each of them, again, what God says, each of them is truly and fully God. So when we have Jesus, we have God. If we have Jesus, we have no need to search anywhere else. Well, praise God for that. Which leads me on this day, I mentioned to you, on this special Mother's Day, just some thoughts before I go into the, Lord, the Lord's Supper, which we will begin in just a little bit. One of the things I'm so thankful for, and you know when you say Mother's Day, it's really happy for a lot of people. Not happy for everybody. Some of you had incredible mothers. Some of you had less than incredible mothers. Uh, it, it just, it just it's, it's one of those things. But we all have a mother. And God says we're to honor our father and our mother. I just thank God that I had a mother who taught me about Jesus. And I had a mother who brought me to church. Let me say this to all the moms out there. You dads, too, will get to you at Father's Day. But let me just say to all the moms out there, make sure your children are getting up and going to church when we can get back together. Make sure that your children are raised in the nurture and the admonition of the Lord. The Lord did not give a single child to a single person who's listening to me right now for any other reason but to raise them up in the nurture and the admonition of the Lord. And I thank my mother that she did. It's one thing my mother did for me. She convinced me that I was so, so loved by Jesus. I think that's the greatest thing that I can remember. I understand. Mama knew how to discipline me. She knew how to discipline me. And when I was at home at the house, and, and, and you know, she, you, you, you never want a daddy to come home because there comes a nuclear warhead behind Mama. But I thank God for a mother. She made me do my chores. She was always in my corner. And that's something I always appreciate about that. Daddy taught me to respect my mom and my sisters and that's a time for a whole nother story I and mean, I'll tell that sometime and I know I said this four or five months ago here at the church maybe just a few months ago but I'm going to say it again that on this special day years and years and years and years and years ago well, a long time ago coach Bryant and coach Jordan at Auburn coach Bryant at Alabama and they were sponsored by South Central Bell. And there was one commercial that they did with Co Coach Bryant. And there was a phone ringing. And then, uh, and it was, it, he just, they just had him and his old craggly face on the screen there. And uh, he said, have you called your mama today? I sure wish I could call mine. Well, that's something that always spoke to me. And I hope speaks to you. Again, I don't know every situation with mothers and all the rest, but maybe it's a good day to give a, your mama or your grandmama or somebody special. Just give them a call. Before we close today, we're going to go and take the Lord's Supper. And I mentioned to you that we were going to do this today, and I hope you've got some elements with you. If you don't have them right now, you can just get a few crackers and 
uh, get you a little grape juice or whatever juice you have around there and let's partake of the Lord's Supper and the Bible says I received from the Lord that which I passed on to you the Lord Jesus on the night he was betrayed he took bread and when he'd given thanks he broke it and he said this is my body which is for you do this in remembrance of me in the same way after supper he took the cup and said this cup is the new covenant in my blood do this and whenever you drink it do this in remembrance of me for whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes therefore whoever eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of sinning against the body and the blood of the Lord that's why a man should examine himself before he eats the bread and drinks of the cup for anyone who eats and drinks without recognizing the body of the Lord Jesus the Lord eats and drinks judgment on himself that's why many among you are weak and sick and a number of you have fallen asleep but if we judged ourselves we would not come under judgment when we are judged by the Lord we are being disciplined so that we will not be condemned with the world now folks I guarantee you one thing I always would rather be disciplined by the Lord than be condemned by the world by the world I was with Scott Tilton not long ago and he shared with me uh, something that Augustine one of the early church fathers talked about something called disordered love disordered love and as we take the Lord's Supper today um, what we're going to do is just like we've done it many many times here at the church you know I want you to take the bread first and just take the bread take the cracker take the whatever wafer you have if you'll just take that first and what we like to do when we take the Lord's Supper especially on a Sunday we we like to take a moment that you and I examine our hearts just a little bit because we don't want to partake of the Lord's Supper in an unworthy manner I liked that statement from Augustine because it, it so fits the first commandment of God it says we are to honor God and no other God is there any other God in your life you know what if there is you know what that is that's disordered love we've placed somebody else higher than God we've placed a promotion we have placed a person we have placed whatever higher than God and maybe in your heart there's someone or something that you've placed higher than God again we're to have no idols we're not to have anything more important than God number three we're not to take God's name in vain I hope you've been pure in your mouth and the things that you've been saying and uh, even if you've been secluded in your home that you're careful with the things that you're saying we're to keep holy the Lord's day thank you for joining with us and being with us on this day in other words get up and go to church and when we get back together uh, get up and come back here and we're to honor our parents and and we're to honor our parents and make sure you're doing that's one of the things Mother's Day is about is to honor your folks kids have you been honoring to your parents have you been insolent or disobedient to them ask yourself that the Bible tells us we're not to murder we should not murder most of you are not guilty of that kind of murder but we sure can murder people with our mouth the things we say we're not to commit adultery is there any involvement that we've gotten ourselves into or misuse of uh, the internet or anything like that that's become a problem we're not to steal we're not to steal and we need to ask ourselves are we robbing God by not giving back to him that which is his and our tithes and offerings and I thank you so much for your faithfulness in that area during this time thank you for that but are we robbing God and if we are then I hope God's word we're not to bear false witness against our neighbor do we speak the truth can people trust us we're not to covet our neighbor's wife we're not to covet our neighbor's goods anything such as that so what I'd like to do with you right now is just take this and let this remember this is the broken body of Jesus Christ that's what this wafer or cracker or whatever you have represents and we do this Jesus said take this eat this bread do this in remembrance of me Lord Jesus Lord God Almighty we pray in the name of Jesus but we thank you so much for the broken body of Jesus that that body was broken so that ours don't have to be 
we thank you. Thank you for your, for your sacrifice. And that same night, he took the cup and he passed it around. And it represented, of course, the juice represented the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, which we know the next day was going to be shed on a horrible cross. And it represents the red blood of Jesus Christ that was spilled for us. We ask ourselves once again, I always try to remind you when we do the Lord's Supper, take a little time to be thankful. Are we thankful for all of our blessings? Are we thankful that God saved us? Are we thankful for our Bible? Are we thankful for our family? Maybe it's no fun to be in the quarantine and being at home, but are you thankful for the home that you have? Whether it's a huge home or a small home, just are we thankful for that? Am I thankful for my friends? Am I thankful for, uh, am, I, am I thankful for my, my heater or my air conditioner? Am I thankful for my job? Or am I thankful for the person who saved, to, who was used by God to save us? Whatever it is, we've got much to be thankful for. So take a moment and just say thanks to the Lord. And trust him and that night he took the cup and he gave it to his disciples and he said take this and drink and remember this and Lord we know that that represents the precious blood of Jesus uh, it's amazing it's amazing that all the sins of the world are cleansed by that blood as long as we reach out and receive the great gift that you gave to us at Calvary we thank you that you conquered sin in the grave we thank you for that Thank you, Lord, for letting us remember you in the Lord's Supper today. In Jesus' name, amen. It's been so good to be with you today. Thank you so much for joining us for the little short study in Colossians and also just taking the Lord's Supper. And happy Mother's Day. Now, before I close, let me, let me give each of you an opportunity to, be, to make the greatest decision that you'll ever, ever make. A lot of you are... Christians, you're believers, and you trust Christ. Praise God. But there may be one, or there may be uh, lots of you, that would say, you know, Pastor, God forbid, if my life were to be over this afternoon, I don't know where I'd spend eternity. I don't know that I'm in Christ. I don't know. Well, the Bible says you must be born again. You must be born again. Everybody has a birthday, but do you have a born again day? And what is that? That means you understand that Jesus is Lord. You understand that you and I have sinned against God. And without Christ, we would be eternally separated from God. But if you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, the Bible says you will be saved. God so loved you. And God so loved the church. God so loved us. That he gave his only begotten son that whosoever would believe in him would never perish but have everlasting life that's a magnificent promise so if you need to pray and receive Christ right now would you pray to the Lord something like this Lord Jesus Lord Jesus Lord Jesus I'm a sinner and I know that I've sinned against you and I ask you to forgive me for my sin and I believe that you are God. And I believe you died on the cross for me. And this moment, I want to be born again. Save my soul. And bring me home to heaven when my life is through. Lord Jesus, thank you for saving me. Thank you for changing my destiny. Thank you, Lord. Let me just say uh, lovingly to you, if you just prayed that prayer to receive Jesus Christ, please let us know. Uh, just uh, Joseph, uh, he gave you some information, or we'll give you some information. 
on how you can text into the church or give us a call at the church. Um, and we look forward to talking to you further. I'd love to sit down and talk to you about your decision for Jesus Christ. I just appreciate so much your hearts. And uh, if you just made that most important decision of all, please, let's just sit down and chit-chat about that. If you've got any kind of questions, if you think everything I said today was ridiculous, whatever it might be, let's sit down and chat together. So please do get in touch with the church and let us know. And uh, we look forward to the next time. Remember, join us Wednesday night. Uh, that, that, that's coming up and uh, at 6.30 as our pastors are preaching through the book of Philippians. And again, thank you, thank you, thank you for your faithfulness in your giving and your encouragement. So many of you have been so encouraging during this time. God bless you all and happy Mother's Day again. Well, thank you so much for joining us. I hope that you've been as blessed as I was through this service and Pastor John's message this morning. I hope that you have connected with us. I hope that you commented, liked, shared this page. Or maybe you need to still go to our website, cpcfamily.org. You can do online giving there. You can find out more about how you can connect through groups or any of our ministries that are going on, student ministry, kids ministry, all of those things, we would love for you to be a part of as much as possible now, but even more so in the future when we're back to 100% capacity. If you didn't go to our website, you can always text CONNECT to 256-772-4463. Let me just take a moment and celebrate your generosity, not only in giving through our online giving platform, but you have been able to help us do ministry all over our community and all over the world, really. We have not slowed down at all helping those in need and those who are most affected by coronavirus. Let me tell you a few ways that you have helped do ministry in your local community. We've been able to send food items to Huntsville Hospital, Madison Hospital, the surgery centers. A lot of these medical professionals who are on the front lines battling this thing, we have been able to provide them with food and snacks and things just to, to give them a little encouragement in Jesus' name. Not only that, we've been able to do that same thing for the Madison City school workers who have been daily handing out groceries and food items at the different locations, different schools throughout our community. We've provided those things not only for the people that are coming to collect groceries, but we have done that as a service to the workers who've been driving buses and delivering them throughout the community. And we have been able to collect some things ourselves and go into places in the community to give out food items to those who haven't been, haven't been in work or haven't been able to get the grocery items that they need. So we've been able to provide for all of those needs. And there's one more that is coming up right now. So Monday, tomorrow, if you're watching this live on Sunday, this Monday we are collecting from 11 o'clock to 2 o'clock more food items that will be donated to HAP. And so uh, Huntsville Assisting Program. And so because of your generosity, we can continue to do that and we'll provide items that they need. If you want to know a list of those items, you can check our social media. Everything's posted there. Maybe you got an email. If you're a part of our church and our email list, you might have gotten an email with that list of items. Please continue to go above and beyond so that we can serve the ones in need around Madison and Huntsville, Alabama in Jesus' name. So thank you for your generosity. Thank you for worshiping with us this morning. We love you. We appreciate you. Have a great day.